In this lecture, I'm going to talk a bit about the algebra of supply and demand. Now this is section 1.2 in the textbook, um, so you can go ahead and do the reading there. Um, that's where the reading that will be relevant for this lecture. Um, and more than just doing algebra of supply and demand, I also have a pair of axes up here. We're going to be doing some graphing of, of the supply and demand curve, so you can actually see how that relates to algebra of supply and demand. Now, you can see that I wrote the equations up here, and I didn't tell you which one's demand and which one's supply. Well, I did that on purpose because it's actually pretty easy to tell which one is demand and which one is supply. Notice that if you look at this, we have equations with variables and constants. Remember, the constants tell you where up on the axes you're going to be, and the variables tell you kind of a slope-like thing. Uh, this may be a little bit tricky, though, um, because we economists are tricky sort of people. Look at what we've done. We put P, that's price, we are talking economics, P is price in economics, P is on the vertical axis, and Q is on the horizontal axis. Now, when you label this as X's and Y's, and you think that Y equals MX plus B, you typically put Y on the vertical axis, and X on the horizontal axis. Look at this. This is not actually the way we have written these equations. The way we've written these equations, as I have behind the little veil there, is we've done it a little bit backwards. The variable that's got all the stuff kind of separated away from it in these equations is the x variable. It's our input variable in the graph. And the variable that is kind of all junked up here is our output variable. It's, it, is, it is the price on these graphs. But remember, we have a reason to write these, uh, these equations this way. Remember, it, with demand and supply, it is the quantity demanded at a given price. That means that in economics, when we're thinking about these equations, the functional way to look at it is, I give you a price, the demand curve will tell us the quantity. I give you a price, the supply curve will tell us the quantity supplied. And so, we should write it this way. But, when we go to the graph, that's not how we actually graph it. We have to do a little bit of algebra. So, for example, let's take this curve right here. I'm not telling you demand or supply curve, but hopefully you can figure it out. And we will do a little bit of algebra. I'm going to switch the place of that and that. I subtracted 2p from both sides. And I subtracted Q from both sides, so there's no Q there, but now there's a minus Q. And to get it so that it looks like Y in terms of X, remember P is like a Y, divide both sides by 2. And now what we have is we have a graphical type equation that we can actually graph here on, the, on this graph. Remember our slope-intercept form, this is our slope. This is our intercept. The slope is minus one-half. This is a downward sloping line. That should tell you that what we just graphed is the demand curve. Notice the coefficient on the P is negative. That's how you can tell it's a demand curve. And here's the intercept. It's at 75. And so we can go ahead and graph 75. And downward sloping curve. We go over one. We go up one-half. And so that is how we can go ahead and graph our demand curve. We can do the same thing with the supply curve. I'll do this one a little bit more rapidly. But the way we can do this is we just get minus 4p equals minus 30 minus q. Again, I subtracted 4, uh, 4p from both sides, and I subtracted q from both sides. Cancels on the places where they were. They come over as negatives. And we can divide by a negative 4. That gives us P equals, boy, now we have to think, what is 30 divided by 4? You can get your calculators out. I'll tell you that it's 7.5. And what is this? Well, it's going to be 1 fourth cubed. And so again, we have a slope and an intercept. Our intercept is here at 7.5. And our slope is flatter than the demand curve, 
we go over one, we go up one fourth. And so there it is. We can go ahead and graph our supply and demand curves. Now, you may have learned in a previous economics class that when you graph your supply and demand curves, that place where they intersect, that's a very important place. That will tell you the equilibrium price and quantity. And this is actually how we will illustrate them. We'll call them Q star and P star. How do we find those? You need to think about that. How do you find where we are on both the supply curve and on the demand curve? Well, both of these equations have to hold true. Remember, this line tells you that this equation holds true. If you are on this line, that means that this equation is satisfied. Now, if both equations are satisfied, then we are good to go. We know that we have the equilibrium price and quantity. And so let's go ahead and try to solve this. Turns out these are pretty hairy and ugly. Look at those fractions. Yuck. I, I don't like to work with fractions. Only when I want to graph do I actually solve for P. Otherwise, erase, erase, erase. You could go ahead and use those equations, but they're exactly the same as these ones. The simplest way to solve supply and demand in this setting is to just set Q equal to Q. And then solve for P. Out pops the equilibrium price, plug it back in, and then you'd be done. So let's go ahead and do that. So this Q is 150 minus 2P. This Q is minus 30 plus 4P. Now here's how, how we'll do this. We'll group like terms. This minus 2, add minus 2P to both sides. We'll get a 6P over here. Add 30 to both sides, we'll get a 180 over here. Now we can just divide both sides by 6. Fortunately, 18 divided by 6 is just 3. So we can get 30, because there are 10 3's, equals the price. And that is our P star. That means that the price right here is 30. How do we find what the quantity actually is? How do we find this Q star? Well, we have two choices. We can plug it in here, or we can plug it in here. Either case, it works out nicely. How about we plug it into our demand curve? So, let's go ahead and plug it in. It's 150 minus 2P, but we want to plug in P star. Plug in 30 in there. So it's 2 times 30, minus 150. I know I sometimes do this backwards. It, it all tends to work out. 150 minus 2 times 30, that's 60. We get 90. And so then, there you have it. A well-labeled graph that illustrates the equilibrium price and quantity. Next up, we'll introduce taxes and turn out that the same tools will be useful for implementing subsidies.